Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about getting out of your own head. And if it's you that's stopping yourself or other things, and I'm telling you, a lot of you are what's holding yourself back. So let's do a deep dive this week on Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. You got six and a half years of content, something like that. A lot, a lot of shows. Go back and watch Binge. Not all of them suck, hmm? Not too bad. Uh, Go back and watch, hopefully you enjoy it all. But I'm talking about an interesting topic today because so many people when we talk in general just have the things that they say as fact, when they're not fact, is a bit shocking. And we all have this. Like, this is not, you know, this is not like just entrepreneurs or just you or just me or just anybody. Every person in the world has this. And it is getting into your own head and telling yourself a fact that's not a fact. Let me give you an example. If anybody ever starts a diet, what do they do? Well, I'll eat whatever I want this weekend, but on Monday, I'm going to start that diet. Now, if you really wanted to start the diet, you'd start right then and there. You'd stop it. You'd change it. It's not even a diet. That means you go off of it. It means that that is your eating, right? That is your lifestyle. People tend to say that. Another piece of it is bungee jumping or um, skydiving or things like that. The reason is is because something bad can happen and your brain doesn't go in and go, man, this is going to be so awesome that first time. There's that scare factor to it, right? The likelihood of you dying is low, but it's there. It's there in everything, right? But your head, that stops it from happening. It's people who are scared of heights. Scared of spiders, scared of whatever. That's your head. That's your making that up. But the catch-22 is your brain is what tells you things, right? Your brain is what tells you what you do feel, what you think, what you all that. But you control your brain sometimes. But if you control your brain and go, hmm, I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I go get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I told myself I wanted that. My brain said, okay, go get it. But if my brain tells me, ooh, we're scared of spiders. I go, oh, we are. Oh, crap. Okay. Oh, yeah, they'll bite you. They could bite you. Definitely bite you. They die. Oh, man, I didn't even know that. Your brain is then telling you. So we stand in our own ways a lot of times. And it comes back to business where so many people Say this thing, and it's like, no, that's not quite right. Oh, yeah, it is. That's right. No, that's you telling yourself it's right, but it's not actually right. The difference between a real fact and the opinion is just that. So I'm going to talk about a few things that I know you may be holding yourself back, and I'm going to start with pricing. Because a lot of you right now, as soon as I said that, you're like, oh, no, I'm like, pretty spot on. Yeah, a lot of times we do, but sometimes we don't do good. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, or no, I mean, I couldn't charge more. My customers wouldn't let me. But you've asked all of your customers. And if you ask them if they want to pay more and they were being honest, they would say no because nobody wants to pay more, but they would pay more. New customers, right? If you're pricing when you're talking to people and you're like, man, my pricing is way off. Cool, raise it. Well, I can't, not in my area. Uh Uh-huh. Let me tell you some fun facts. Last week, I personally texted to 148 different people just last week, just last week. Now that's not back and forth. Some people I'm talking to for days. So there's conversations. I'm talking to different numbers. I texted 148 different people. Phone calls. I was on the phone for over 18 hours last week. My business line, my, my, my work number, not personal. That's why I don't answer my phone. <laughs> Personal them. <laughs> right? On top of that, I had two 13-hour shifts 
on chat, on top of all of the calls and texts. And I won't even get into emails and uh, special messages and direct messages and all that stuff. Two days, Monday and Tuesday in a row, were 13 hours on chat. Now, I'm just babbling numbers, but to tell you, I talk to window cleaners. I talk to as many window cleaners as pretty much anybody out there. I've been hardcore in the industry for that long, and I've talked to people. So when I'm telling you this is like an average, it's not because I have three buddies or I jump on the Facebook group. Because Facebook's more for show. It's kind of people putting stuff that they want you to know about them on there. Nobody's like, oh, man, I sure did, you know, have the trots last night. <laughs> I don't think anybody calls it that anymore. This is PG as I can get. But they don't put that out there. They only put the things they want you to hear or know about them, right? Oh, my trip to Cancun is really it's cool. So when I tell you this, it's incredibly common when people are like, oh, yeah, now my customers won't let me. I can't charge more. Really? Because you are not the only window cleaner in your area at all. And in fact, I've probably talked to the others in your area, and they're okay with it. right? If you're under the actual average, like way under, you go, well, it's not my area. It is. But you're holding yourself back. You can't take the fact that somebody says no. Ferraris are worth the money to the people who are buying a Ferrari. But a Ferrari may not be in your budget. It's not my budget. So if I talk to a Ferrari guy, he goes, yeah, it's $320,000. But this is the absolute. And he goes all the way in. And I'm like, man, that is amazing. But yeah, way beyond anything I could do. Well, your payment's only... You know, $3,200 a month. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to do that. That's okay. The guy who sells Ferraris goes, oh, definitely. Well, if things change and you're ever in the position, come talk to me. He understands a no is okay. You sometimes have problems with that. So sometimes people go, well, they can't charge no because they said, oh, gosh, I don't know. This one person said no. Well, yeah, okay. They also called you not knowing what it would cost. Their last guy was their second cousin, Eddie, who did it for 50 bucks. Now you're trying to charge him $200, and they said no. Well, everybody else is still going to charge him $200, unless there's a lowballer out there. It's you that holds yourself back from your pricing. Now, with that being said, I have to, because the internet is full of the trolls of the world, which I love you guys, I have to preface it by saying there's obviously a diminishing return. If I'm closing 90, 95% of my jobs, that's perfect. That's awesome. I don't need 100%. Because 95% of jobs are at the right price. The other five that say no, I don't have to go for under that. Somebody will fill that spot in. But if you raise your prices so much, you're like, okay, every window is $1,000. He said I could charge anything. You could be dang confident. But when you're that you got to find a really, really, really special person and you really have to convince them. And it is incredibly rare. So what happens is your close rate goes down to try to get more. There's a point where, okay, I could sell 10 jobs at $1,000 or 100 jobs at $500. I'd rather have 100 jobs still because that number is meaning they're wanting it than that couple jobs at 10000 and lose money. Not the other market you could spend ten you know, charge $10,000, high five. There's obviously a cap, but so many people are even below average. I mean, look at polls. I've done polls. Where, where are you, what are you pricing per window right now? What are, Per pane. There's people out there charging $20 a pane. I think $10 a pane, ins and outs in residential, a pane, so double hung is two, that's $20. Screens are at five, uh, deep cleaning tracks like three. That's pulling out a vacuum and a toothbrush. That's average. That's like right there. A lot of people are above that. But that's like an average across the country. When you talk to somebody and you're like, oh man, yeah, I can't do that in my area. My customers wouldn't allow that. It's you. You are not allowing you to do that. You have to be confident in something. You ever talk to a really bad salesman? You go in and you're like, man, I want a hot tub. I'll go in there and look at all these hot tubs. Like, man, what about this one? And he's like, well... Yeah, you know, it's pretty big, but it's kind of expensive too. I mean, if you're looking to spend $15,000, yeah, 
They're like, oh, yeah, huh, yeah, that's pretty nice, but okay. What, what would you What would you say? Well, you know, we can have like could do like an inflatable one for like three hundred bucks. You know, it doesn't have all the like that guy is not confident. He doesn't even own a hot tub. He also doesn't have the money to buy a hot tub or doesn't like hot tubs or doesn't whatever. He's not confident. But if you're looking for a hot tub, the ultra top of the line hot tub that's got everything, TVs and, you know, air fryers. I don't know what they have. Everything the bells and whistles that they have. Man, if you're looking for the hot tub, that is it. And here's why. If you're confident in the fact that that still is the best hot tub or the biggest hot tub or the craziest thing, you can sell that. But you are not going to be confident in a price that you're not actually confident with. If you think it's too much, you're going to convey that to the customer. All right, your price is going to be uh, $4.99. Um, kind of have a lot of windows. You know, the, the back will probably take us some time. No, oh, you can't do any better. I am feeding off your conversation. I feel that from you. Yeah, it's too high because I think you think it's too high. Right? Pricing is a big one. I'll jump off that if you want. There's tons of other episodes on there. Pricing is absolutely, absolutely key, and there's so many pieces to it. Another thing you're focused on that you shouldn't be focused on or is in your head is the other guy. Again, everything you see, if you're on Facebook Pro, Pro Window Cleaning, huge group, 30,000 members. If you're in that and you know somebody that's on there is also in your area, and you're like, oh, man, these guys are just doing so great. Oh, they're just, oh, man, oh, they're, oh, they're, oh, they're blah, blah, blah. You're only looking at their success. You don't really know. So in your head, you go, oh, these guys, they got all these really fancy trucks. Man, they must be doing so much work. I'll tell you. One of the first times I got this realization was when I first started business. First, this is so long ago. And I show up at this lady's house, very nice, sweet old lady. And uh, we're talking, you know, and she goes, oh, I knew, you know, we were looking for a new window cleaner. I knew I had to hire you guys. I see your trucks everywhere. We had one truck, one truck at the time. I was like, oh, thank you. Perception trumped reality because she didn't know reality. No one actually knows reality. It's only perception. It's the reason that all these people on Instagram and, you know, all these other things, they go and pay to pretend to be in a jet. So they could be like, oh, it was just flying, you know. They want to put the perception out. They get a bunch of free clothes or free trips or whatever, and they do these big things. They're not even staying at the resort, but they're taking pictures on the resort like they are. Perceived reality. That's the other guy. You're focused on the other guy and you don't know. All you can do is speculate. So don't focus on them. See what they're doing. Keep an eye. But just focus on yourself because you know the truth. Both sides. Another one that I always, always, always talk to people about is frequency. I love the dentist clothes. If you've implemented it, it's changed your life. If you haven't, go back and watch. I won't talk on that. But when... People don't either succeed at the dentist clothes or they won't implement it. It's because they, in their own head, are like, oh, yeah, they don't want to have it done more than that. No. No, like when they're ready, they'll call. Like, what? Your job, literally the definition of your job is when they're happy. You make people happy. Happy. That's what you do. That's literally what you do. Why would you... Dictate when somebody wants to be happy. Man, this is great. Oh, it's a little treat for myself. Cool. Let's get it done in three months, six months. Which which one would you rather do? I want to make them happy again. Every six months. I have customers, houses, had two dozen that did their house every month. Every month. I had one that did it every three weeks because her husband was like a, a traveling guy. And he was gone for that time. So we always, every three weeks he'd travel. We would go in during that so he could come home to kind of a nice house. Sweet. Do you think you should do it that often? Heck yeah. If it makes you happy, yeah. Why not? Right? It's not up to me to tell them what their happiness is or that it's too much. Would, would ever, ever would you go, somebody going to get ice cream would say, yeah, I'll have, uh, I'll do two scoops. And they go, no, no, I'd recommend one. One is enough to kind of, you know, 
No. And when you leave there, they give you a punch card to come back. Like every other business can do this. Like every business has that. But you stand in your way about doing it because your brain is telling you it's frequency. It's too much. It's too much. We're, 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 you know, stealing their money. If you're making somebody happy and they're happy to pay for it, they're happy. No one gets their windows clean. They're like, man, this guy cleaned my windows too well. Me clean them too often. Mm. Nobody, nobody thinks that. Really, step out, step out. Not even at your business. Think of somebody else. Any other business, any other business you have. If somebody buys something because they enjoy it, they buy it as many times as they want to be happy, right? It's like uh, women getting their nails done. They can paint their own nails, but sometimes you just want to be pampered. No, hey, you can do this yourself. Don't come here anymore. May maybe once a year. You can call us maybe once every two years. No. No. Nobody does that. You're the reason you don't do that. Okay, quick break. You know the drill. Shameless plug of the week. I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, and it's what I do. It's how I make money. So if you are putting in orders, which I know you are, I see all the names that come crossed, let me put your orders in. Literally costs you nothing extra. Um, all you do is be like, yeah, it's in my cart. And uh, here's another thing. If there is a sale going on, and uh, you text me in the middle of the night or on a Saturday or something and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta put, you don't have to put it in. As soon as you text me, it locks it in. So even if I put it in a Monday, you're not losing anything. I'm gonna make sure everything's there. I'm gonna check over stuff. If I see anything weird, I'm gonna let you know and it costs you nothing extra. And it's like a high five of awesomeness for me. Plus, um, if you let me know, I will hook you up with a limited edition Cool Kid sticker, which I forgot to do for quite a while there. I kind of like stopped doing it. And uh, so anyway, we're running through stock. We have now new edition should be probably ready to go in June. So uh, get the one now and then there'll be a new one uh, in June. Anyway, if you also have not yet, the American Window Cleaner magazine is all new, redesigned, phenomenal. Ah, it's so good. It's so good. Um, by the way, if I know you've probably had um, seen maybe the old issues and things, the new magazine's completely in a redesign. I want you to have it because you are awesome. Also, a subscription uh, is an entire year, 12 issues to your door, $69 for the entire year, and you get the sticker sheet. Every single month, you get stickers and, uh, yeah, you know, put on everything. Jump in the industry. This is like what we do. So go there, awcmag.com, get a subscription. Um, yeah, make my day. There you go. Okay, another one that people really kind of hold themselves back on is upsells. And upselling is an interesting one because when people somehow think that we're in necessity, it's different in your brain. Okay, let me let me start over. Let me start. Let me let me say this. If I have a, a cancer drug or drug for any kind of medical condition, I don't have to be worried about price if it's my only one. But if it means somebody lives or dies, they're willing to pay more. But morally, like man, this thing I should really be, I should be affordable so they can so they can live. I can save more people this way. It's the idea that a lot of these scientists, especially back in the day, would come up with something and then make it public. They're like, hey, I can't even profit from this. It's just going to help so many people. That morally, that's what you want to do. Yes, there's awful people who, you know, 100 times the medication cost because they're awful. And, uh, you know, anyway. But a need is different, right? If... I have a fixed income person who's just not having a ton of income. I want to find a program to be able to help them with cheap groceries or have that option or whatever, right? 
I mean, that is what you're looking for. But we're not that. No one needs their windows cleaned. And if you're arguing that fact, think of the word need. Need. No one needs window cleaning. What you need is air to breathe. Water, food, need. We are not a need. We are a luxury. So we make people feel good. The reason people buy a luxury is to feel good. They like whatever it is. You're either fixing up pain points or creating happiness. Pain point, I don't want to spend all weekend cleaning my windows. I hire a company, sweet, it's done, it's amazing. And I didn't have to do it. Cool, I fixed the pain point. But I'm so happy my windows are done now. I get to look outside, it's so great. Happiness. I pay a lawn service. Not because, you know, it's hard to mow a lawn. I don't want to do it. So, I get rid of my pain, and then every time I come home when it is done, I'm like, yeah, it looks nice. Happiness. Upselling is that. You have things that make people happy. Gutters. Okay, my pain point is I think my gutters are going to start leaking. They're going to clog, and then it's just going to get damaged, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna need a new roof. And I'm like, cool, we clean gutters. Oh, my gosh, awesome. Oh, I'm so happy. The pain is gone of the gutters. These screens are ripped. They're really faded and kind of looking back. Oh, man, all my neighbors are going to see. I can't even open my windows because the bugs just fly right in. These things look so terrible. I can't touch them. If I touch them, they fall apart. Cool, we'll fix the screens. <gasps> really? Uh -huh. Upselling is just that. It makes people happy. Roof cleaning. Oh, the neighbors look at my house. looks so terrible. It's such a nice house, and the roof just looks crappy. i got to get a new roof. It's going to be like $20,000. No, you don't. I can clean it. Right? None of this has to get done, but it brings happiness, takes away a pain point. Upselling does that on a bunch of different things. So if you're not pushing upselling, not pushing, not being pushy, but pushing it out there and letting these people know, asking, telling them what you can do for them, you're doing a disservice. A to your company, but B to them, because now they're going to have this pain point. They're still miserable thinking about this stuff. Every time it rains, they think about it. Upsell makes sense. And you know what? You're worried about those gutters? Here, we'll just do this. We'll get you scheduled now and we'll put you in the rotation on spring. We'll get it done in your spring window cleaning. We're doing this cleaning every six months for your windows. We'll just put the gutter cleaning on one of those. Oh my gosh, it'd be so nice. And I could just, it's off my brain. I don't even have to think about it. Absolutely. That's it. It's not your pain point, it's theirs. It's the reason if I go into a Ferrari dealer and I'm like, hey, I want something that when I drive, strangers take pictures of me. I want to be that guy. I want to pull up and be able to park right in front, walk out, and be like, boom. Uh, all right, I got the car for you. If I say, man, I am looking for something that for me is luxurious and fast, and uh, I love the Ferrari brand, and but I don't want it to be flat. I don't want people to like see it. I kind of want to like blend in, you know, they can walk me into a different one, maybe an SUV, maybe like a calmer car, maybe something like that. It's you, your pain point. Their pain point as the customer is what matters, not yours, not your brain. You're not your customer. You're not selling to you, you're selling to them. Get out of your head on that. And here's the hard truth. I'm going to put this one out there, and this one always upsets people. This is meant for motivation, not uh, crapping on anybody, for sure. But one thing that you are in your head on, and it's very, very easy to convince yourself, is the success or failure of your current situation. Now, failure in a lot of people's heads just means that, oh, it failed, it's done, closed. It's not that. Failure means I'm not happy with where I am. I'm not happy with what it's doing. I'm not happy with something. I failed to be successful. I failed to be as successful as I'd like. Well, it's the market. You know, it's the election. Uh, it's the weather. It's the... Cool. Okay. If that's the truth, um, A, why is the guy in your same city 
doubling his company this year. B, what ads are you doing? Uh, how much split testing are you doing? What are you doing to actively do anything towards that? Well, I put a Facebook ad out like two months ago. I don't really get many calls from it. Did you, you're split testing every day? Well, no, I mean, it's a good ad. Right? It's easy to convince ourselves it's something else's problem. The human nature to anything is if it's not us. So if it's me, right? If I don't like my weight, it's because of the food I eat and the lack of stuff I do. If I'm balding, it's not my fault. That's then kind of genetics. Was there things that have happened in the past? Yeah, but I'm there now. I can't, you know, I can't just flip a switch and turn things around unless I go into treatments and stuff like that. But if you take everything and put it under that, um, yeah, I am a lot heavier. I've gained a lot of weight, and the reason is because glandular. Uh, the weight is I'm getting older. The weight is, the reason is, the reason is, the reason is. It's easy when it's somebody else's fault. Yeah, business is down right now, but you know, it's an election year. Well, you're not going to do anything to change it, and you're not going to hold yourself accountable because guess what? It's an election year. That's the reason. It's easier to be okay with things. It's not your fault. But here's the thing. When you have such success... You're like, man, this year is going great. To not be pompous, you may not say it. But you're like, ah, this is easy. Yeah, I don't know how somebody can succeed. If things fell into line, you instantly assume it's easy. Not that it was you that put it on the right path. There are dummies out there, um, pros, a good group, but there are dummies out there with that too. Everybody forgets that everybody around them does what they do and they think somehow they're like, I don't know. Anyway. But in that same side is that they don't necessarily put it back to themselves. And then they just hope things change. When the interesting side of it is, is you get to be the one to change it. Does it take a lot of work? Yeah, that's why not every business makes it. Not every business is good because there is a lot of things that have to go into that. But if you're down right now, what are you doing for the ads? Where's your, your, your SEO? Did you start the SEO six months ago? Like I've been telling you, did you split test these Facebook ads? Did you do the EDM the right way? Did you, you know, do your upselling? Is your dentist closing? Well, no, I haven't done the dentist close yet, but that's not, no, I'm talking about like just, just the economy. Uh huh. What kind of ads are you put in? Well, I mean, things are so slow, I'm not even, you know, advertising. I'm putting it out there and even my ads aren't working. Is it your ads aren't working or your ads suck? No, no, no. My ads are good. Of course, it's the, their, their fault, right? It's so easy and everybody does it in pieces of their life. Everybody does it. That's the hard part is we're trying to reconnect our brains in a certain way. This is the reason that David Goggins guy is as popular as he is. Why, uh, you know, um, Tony Robbins and all these other guys, they're literally famous because they are saying those things. They're helping people rewire their brains. David Goggins, oh, the guy doesn't quit. You don't have to quit either. Like, you quit doing it because your brain told you to stop and you're like, okay, if I stop, my legs won't hurt. If I don't do this, then I won't, like, you're in your brain. Success, failure, pricing, upsells, frequency, all of those things you say don't work, or you're not happy with the success, you can change. You can literally change, but it's your head that gets in the way. And that is the hardest thing to change. It's the hardest thing to change. Because here's the thing, if you work for somebody else and they raise the price, Cool, okay, well, I'm going to work still. Doesn't doesn't do anything to you. The hard part is the making it of that, the, the actual raising of the price. That's the hard part. 
It's doing it. It's reconnecting. It's redoing the brain. It's getting out of your head. Don't stand in your own way. Open that up. That's why there's movies about the limitless pill. Right? Anyway, in this season where you're as busy as you are, make sure you're taking it all in, getting as much as you can from it, and not being your worst enemy. Get out of your head. Boom. Shameless plug, number two. If you haven't yet, get a subscription to uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Phenomenally awesome. Go get that. And uh, I am a rep for Window Cleaner. Literally the, the way I make money. So please let me put orders in for you. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I'm just a text away or a phone call if you got questions. 862-312-2026. Is my number. Save it. Jersey. I'm your only Jersey you probably know. Let me know what I can do for you. I would love nothing more. Big orders, small orders is never, ever a burden for me to put an order in because I get credit for every order. Even if it's like, hey, man, we ship free over 49 It's $49 one cent. Sweet. Thank you. I want everything. So please do do that. But more importantly, until next week, get out of your head. More importantly, go out there and be happy.